Inside this box, we have our carnivorous potatoes, otherwise known as our tubers, and they have only got two months to live, but we are going to try and change that. Let's open up this box and take a look at them before I tell you guys what we're gonna do to actually help them grow. Oh, guys, I haven't opened up this box since we got here. I'm just so curious to see how they look now. Whoa, guys, look at that. I'm gonna break through the packet that they're in. Let me get all these plants out. So we have now been in England for about two weeks and it is currently winter. And these plants are winter growers, which is why they're currently growing. However, there's only about two months left of winter in the Northern Hemisphere, which is why I say they only have about two months left before they could die. But if we plant them up and we get them growing, we can give them a small growth season and then allow them to go back into dormancy, back into these little tubers here, and then they will be able to survive until the next full winter. So we actually need to go out now and get some pots, some soil, uh, some trays for them, get everything ready for them so that we can pot them up today. However, I wanna do some things a little bit differently. I'll tell you guys exactly what I mean after I show you how interesting this little box is. You guys can see everything's purple, pink, orange. It's all stained from the tubers. They're all in their packets, but it's obviously been stained through the packets. Very cool. And right here, we found this guy on the floor. Now we don't know what tube it is. It could be any one of these guys here. We're going to plant it up and let it grow so we can find out what species it is. So if you guys also want to see what species it is, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on seeing this little guy's growth. So let me go ahead and tell you guys about what we're going to be doing differently going forward. So after getting a bit of experience with Facebook Marketplace by selling our entire everything on it back in Australia, I've now come to the conclusion that we should use it to get stuff that we need. First off, we need peat. Now, I did a search for peat and we didn't really find anything. No one in the area really has it. And the same kind of goes for silica sand. There was this huge bag of builder sand and obviously I don't need that much and I don't know how to transport that. So those were both out the question. Unfortunately, I had to buy that new not a big problem but it is on the way but when we did a search for pots so we found a lot of pots for free like five minutes away so let us go put on another jacket and let's go get them all right well we're here now and look at these tunnels that they have mm. let's go take a look what is future greens yeah and they're just giving away pot ever since i met karen she's <laughs> kind of taught me okay guys and we are now back let me show you what we've got so we have these pots here they are a bit small for our tubers tubers love long pots but we couldn't find any and beggars can't be choosers We've got 50 litres of peat, 20 kilos of some silica sand from B&Q. And we also got these pots over here. Some nicer, bigger sizes for some saracenias or fly traps or something like that. I do have something cool to announce at the end of this video. So make sure you stay towards the end because we will be using these pots sooner than you guys might be thinking. But yeah, guys, I'm going to show you how to mix up the soil for these plants and get them potted before it's too late. All right, so we are on the first half of making our soil. The first half is to use silica sand. I have two pots of silica sand. We are going to wash the sand. These companies always say that they wash their sand, blah, blah, blah. But if you look at that foam, does that foam look clean to you? No, it looks dirty. The water looks murky. We do not want dirt in our soil. So what we do, we fill it up. We can let all the sand sink to the bottom and all the dirty water we can get rid of. Let's make sure that our plants don't have any rubbish inside of the soil, which can kill them. And after about 10 minutes of cleaning, our sand is now so much cleaner as you guys can tell. And now I have one pot of the sphagnum peat moss, so it's the ratio that I'm using is two sand, one peat. Now you mix it up very thoroughly, and this is where I'm gonna get frostbite. Thank you. 
And there you have it, guys. This is very similar to the soil that they naturally grow in in the wild. I promise you, I've seen it myself. It is very, very similar to this. Just basically sand with a bit of peat in there to hold water and give it a bit of structure, guys. So I can't feel my hand. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but I'm gonna go inside and warm them up a little bit and I'll bring you guys back when I've done that. All right, guys, so now since we've made our soil, we have to get our pots. But what I do recommend if you use something that is as sandy as the soil is at least something to prevent all the sand and soil from falling out the bottom of your pot. What I don't recommend is kitchen towel like we have here. What I do recommend is sphagnum moss, but there's kind of like a worldwide shortage of it. So this will, this will suffice for the next two months. It's not going to be a big problem, but we're just going to pack in some sand into all of these pots put some paper towel in there just to hold the sand so it doesn't fall through the holes. And then we can get started with saving our plants. We can finally pot them up, guys. So let me get to it. All right guys, now that all of our pots are ready, it's time for us to finally pot up our plants. If you stayed up until this point in the video, I would really appreciate it if you guys left a thumbs up because my thumbs are actually really, really cold. So let us go and put some plants into the soil. So we are now inside and it is finally time for us to pot up our carnivorous potatoes, otherwise known as our tubers, and we are starting off with Drosera colina. This is a beautiful sundew that we got in a trade back in Australia and it is one that I really have treasured ever since I got it because of these really big low laying rosette leaves. I really really love this one guys and I hope you guys will too. Up next we have Drosrum in CCI and their growth is kind of questionable but they're growing really well nonetheless. You can see that we have I would say too many of them so if you ever get one for yourself, you know that they will not end up dying on you because they will keep reproducing non-stop and they are really easy to grow too. So if you do get them, just know that you might actually be plagued with them for the rest of your life. Up next, we have Drosra stolonifera and for some reason, we only have one plant of this kind, even though we got more than one initially. However, it is a really beautiful plant in that it creates different branches when it grows up the ground and is one that I really enjoyed growing last winter. So I cannot wait to see this one come out the ground and hopefully we get some more tubers this time. Up next we have Drosera platypoda and they have an interesting growth habit. They start off growing pretty flat and then after a while they start growing straight up into the air and their little traps remind me of outstretched hands. It's really really cool. I wonder if you guys think the same thing as me but let me know in the comments down below. Next up, we have Drosera macrantha, and this is a species which is super, super prolific. They create these traps and they kind of remind me of a little waterfall of stickiness because of how many traps they make. They're such an easy grower and they create so many tubers. We actually have about four or five different types of macranthas in our collection now, and they are just super, super easy growers. If you ever get one, you will be a hundred percent certain that you will not lose them. Another cool thing that I wanted to share with you guys is that these little traps, these little tubers that we have, they create these little growth points as you can see. And I remember when I first got these in Australia, I spent hours up until three in the morning making sure that these little trap things, these little growth points were all facing upright towards the sky only to be told later on in the comments that it doesn't matter and I could literally pull them off and the plants will grow them again. So yeah, I'm not going to worry about it this time guys. Here we have Drosra Gnuticola and these guys are super awesome because even though they grow upright up into the air, they actually stay a little bit smaller compared to the other ones. The other ones, they can get really big and like huge, bushy and like that's super cool, believe me, but these guys are very cool in that you can have them and they won't be as big. So if you have less space, this guy could really work well for you. This is Drosera andersoniana and it's one of my favorites because their tubers remind me of little lemons. 
aside from that, their traps also remind me of fireworks. So I think they're very, very cute little plants that you guys can grow too. And they are pretty easy to grow, so you won't have any problems having them in your collection. And here we have a very special plant. This is Strasera aberrans. And the reason why this is a very special plant is because it was actually donated to us by one of our subscribers. And his name is Aaron. So Aaron, thank you so, so much for this donation. I cannot wait to grow these plants. And the very unique thing about this plant is that we've never grown it before. We've never had this plant on our channel. It's the first time I've ever grown them. And it is one of the flat laying tuberous sundews, which I really, really love and adore. So once again, Aaron, thank you so, so much. I cannot wait to grow this plant with everyone. And if you guys want to follow along in the journey of how this plant ends up looking for us, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And now, last but not least, we have our mystery tuber. My guys, like I mentioned, I have absolutely no idea what species this plant is. We found it on the floor when we were cleaning the house before we left Australia, and it must have fallen out one of the packets when I was doing a previous video. So what we're going to do, we're going to pot it up and wait for it to grow. It's going to be all alone in the pot. It might be, you know, very cold in the pot because it has no one to cuddle up to. But once it starts growing, we'll be able to figure out what species it is and reunite it with its family. Now I know what just said, but if you want to join along in finding this guy's family, make sure you subscribe to the channel. But now it is time for that really interesting news which I told you guys I had for you at the beginning of this video. Three years ago, when I just moved to Australia, I had bought four species of Saracenia. These species were going to be sent from England all the way to Australia to join me there. However, that never ended up happening. What that meant is that we had four very cool Saracenia species staying here with my mom. Now those four species are two types of Saracenia flava, one Saracenia leucophila, Tarnock, and a Saracenia mana. These are four very cool Saracenia species. Now because I was staying with my mom who doesn't know how to look after these plants, all but one ended up dying. She did try her best, but I don't blame her. They're not the easiest, especially when you don't really care about them. But that means that we have one species that we have to save, plant up and figure out what its real name is. So the soil in it is not the best, but in the next video, we are going to be repotting this guy, making sure that it is happy and healthy, and we are going to grow this guy back up to its former beauty to find out what species this is. So I'll see you guys in that video.